think we are live now. Hello everyone. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to Pennsylvania Ballet Academy's live Instagram. Uh, we are so excited to have this live um, interview today. Um, I'm David Karapetian. Vanessa Zahorian. We're the artistic directors of Pennsylvania Ballet Academy and we are going to have our guests. Um, do you want to talk about who we're going to So have? today we're going to have Adiaris Almeida, Taras Dimitro and Yuriko Kajia. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited. So we're going to first have Taras and Adiaris. Uh, we've known them such a long time. In fact, uh, Taras was with San Francisco Ballet when we were dancing uh, for many years and so we sh share the stage with him it's been a pleasure and we can't wait to have them talk to us in mm -hmm. specific uh, uh, subjects but you know uh, they've been such an incredible artist mm -hmm. uh, and uh, an inspiration for so many dancers mm -hmm. and we are just uh, Happy to have them. Right? And Adiaris, we met actually at the Jackson Ballet competition, and um, you know when we saw her, she just was phenomenal, like yeah. a dancer that was just a firecracker. Fire, definitely. And we introduced yes. ourselves to each other, and her uh, energy and person personality just yeah. was well. I see. Wonderful. I see them already, so we can maybe mm -hmm. ask them, and then we can talk all together, and they can explain that. Yes. Okay, hang on. Let's see. Go live. And we're going to keep the comments on everybody. So while we're <coughs> waiting for Adiars and Taras. Hi. <laughs> Hi, guys. <coughs> hey. Okay. <laughs> we tried to do it on the phone. There you go. There you go. That's perfect. <laughs> hey, guys. Hi guys. How are you? Hello. <laughs> so good to see you. Yes. Oh, Taras, I was actually. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're good. good. We're good. Right. How are good you? Good to see you. <laughs> so good. Oh my God. <coughs> this is this is the quarantine uh, style, right? It's the... <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> no theaters, no no race. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. That hurts. So many months at home. Oh my God. It's right. okay. <laughs> it's fine soon. How is it going for you? Huh? How's it going for you? Good. We're fine. We just finished first week of our summer program, virtual classes, which is in, in, incredible. I mean, it's, you never would think this would happen, but you I know, know, I know. And you always have to find, uh, you know, solutions yeah. to, to fight those uh, obstacles. Yeah. 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 So we're hanging in there, guys. We're hanging in there, guys. My Bye. voice is gone from zooming too much. <laughs> I know, I know. Your, your vision is like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you guys? You good? We're good. Waiting. Good. Yeah, I know. Like so we were just introducing you guys how incredible, talented, artist, human being, uh, you know, you are. You know. <laughs> Thank you guys. You're so sweet. We're so lucky to know you and work with you and, you know, uh, so this, and by the way, if you guys don't remember or don't know, they were one of our uh, stars in our gala uh, last year. Um, unfortunately, this year is not going to happen. They came to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We were looking forward to it this year. Yeah, I yeah. know. So, so soon. Yeah, hopefully, we hope hopefully so. we'll get there soon. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, we wanted to talk to you about. I mean, we like I said, you guys are incredible artists, and we wanted to bring some something. You know, that very special things that you are so incredible. You're. Incredibly many things and well-rounded. Yes, both but we want to talk about one thing that um, You know how everything came along and how you're doing it so easily and stuff But before that we want to just give you a little time to talk about you and where you grew up and how you start ballet What was the motivation and your a little bit your backgrounds? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. how about we we start with as All right <laughs> So we both we both originally from Cuba so we started at the Cuban National Ballet School, first of all, the elementary ballet school, and then eight years total. It's an incredible training. So we were very lucky to grow up with that incredible training. And uh, I came to the U.S. when I, I was 19. That was in 2003. Mm -hmm. 
So I've been here since then, and just my career took over a little bit different path. You know, I went, I danced in like four different companies, so I move out around a lot. But it's been all very positive, and I learned so much. So, and I've been freelancing now for about seven years. Seven mm -hmm. years. So. And how is that? How is freelancing? I mean, is it uh, as, as compared to in a company, you know? You know, it's, it's very hard. Um, I wasn't planning to do it for a long time, but it worked out for me. Mm -hmm. And I, it just happened to work out. I was dancing a lot, a lot more and mm -hmm. getting opportunities to go around the world and get inspiration from different dancers and yes. sharing the stage with incredible people. And I dance with many companies and theaters around the world. So um, it's been really amazing, truly, like amazing. But mm -hmm. it's very hard because you have to have a lot of self-discipline. Yes. You know, the every day, even when you know you have maybe a month without performances, you have mm -hmm. to really keep training and stay in the best shape because sometimes you just get called and you have a good opportunity to go dance with a company mm -hmm. or a theater or a gala or whatever, and you have to be ready for that. So, and, and make sure that if you take vacations, you know, you know, mm -hmm. you take your time to come back and you cannot commit to a performance. So, I don't know. It's a very, 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 it's very hard and, and it takes mm -hmm. a lot of responsibility, but I've been having a good time. Boarding because you can actually set your own schedule, you know, there's a lot of great things with it, you know. Yeah, that's the other thing too. You, you get to choose also what you want to do, mm -hmm. but it's also very hard to make up, to, to put the schedule together. Really mm -hmm. hard. <laughs> trying to figure out sometimes it's been months yeah. that we don't come home yeah. because we have to go from one place to the other so living on a suitcase so. mm -hmm. at least this time it's been good for that right we, we, yeah. we, we've been able to enjoy home a little bit yeah, we never thought we, we would miss it but we are right now it's been a while <laughs> well, it's, we it's, took a plane or anything it's, it's just to stay where your comfort place is and just I have never been this long in, in this house never <laughs> Adiara, so I wanted to ask you, because you are just a phenomenal turner. I mean, your pirouettes are out of this world on point shoes. I know that the, the young generation right now would love to get some advice or feedback. Was it always easy for you? Was it just something that just was natural? Did you have to work at it? Do you think about it? I mean, you know. I know what Tara just say. What about you? You know, same year, same thing. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you both are phenomenal turners. It's like Taurus too and the RDRS. It's just incredible. You know, I don't know. Like everybody always asks me this, and I, I, I think honestly, it has, it has to do a lot with our training. Mm -hmm. um, everybody asks like, why in Cuba? You know, like male and female dancers can turn so well. Mm -hmm. I think it has to be with the foundation. Like mm -hmm. we. Like in Cuba, the, the way they teach us is like, we ne almost never go one side and the other. We hold positions a lot. So you create that balance sensation, you know, from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. We hold positions, like after every combination, we balance. So you create that feeling, you know? Yeah. Place, um, placement, placement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that that, you know, start making your body understand, you know, what mm -hmm. that, that sensation of balance. And then... Uh, then we, when we go in the uh, level three, you start doing everything in releve already. Mm -hmm. By level five, you're doing pirouette almost in, like in the bar, from the bar. And at the end of the combination, they start getting all that. And then in the, the last three years pre-professional, the National Ballet School, we do pirouettes in every combination in center, even in the jumps. They combine the jumps with pirouettes. So I think that repetition... Yeah, you know, creates such an incredible sensation in your body. I, I truly believe it's, it's about sensation mostly. Mm -hmm. And also, I think kids in Cuba are also obsessed with it. You know, people it's practice the turn, it right? always. They're always doing pirouettes. I, rem I remember when I was a child, mm -hmm. my mom had to get me shoes constantly because I would ruin my flip flops <laughs> and my tennis shoes. Like if I would go five minutes be be Stop. between math and, and English class, I would be doing pirouettes in the hallway. Everybody was like that. But not just me, everybody. Probably challenging each other. class in the hallways and everywhere you find and you're practicing. Yeah. It's dancing, man. It's, 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 it's so very interesting because years ago when I was working with Angel in Spain, I was working with Natalia Makarova and she asked me the same. She's like, I was terrified of turning when I was a dancer. What did they teach you? And I told her and she's like, 
and it's exactly the same i don't understand and i say yeah. i say the same you know i was like i don't know i think it's just that feeling of just doing over and over since you lead or you your body really creates that sensation and that feeling when you i don't know and over the years is there's just been that thing that cubans turn yeah turn and you know since they're kids they start turning well like and, It's insane just watching videos. Cuba, uh, Bali in Cuba is so popular. It's like football here. Mm -hmm. Soccer. I don't know. Like, like they... when, I was in, when I was a student still, I was, you know, I, I, I saw Carlos Acosta and I was like mesmerized. <laughs> <laughs> also, and I was like, oh my God, I want to go there. And then I, I met another, you know, I saw Juan, Juan's videos, you know, Juan Bodan. I was like, oh my God, these guys can't tell. I want to go to Cuba. I want to know. What and then Carreño. <laughs> and then you saw Sarabia. And I was like, wow. What's the, what's the recipe? Yeah, what's the recipe? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's incredible. Is it, that is is that will to to turn? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Every but but time, also, every, every time we could, we yeah, also use that little board. That we yeah, the turning body, board. The spotting sensation the was great. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, amazing because. Way. And I think like everything else is about creating a sensation. In this case, a turning sensation, pulling mm -hmm. up in spots. And of course, everybody always have the, um, something that they better add because it's like natural, you know, like it could yeah. be a little bit of that too. Mm -hmm. You know, like it is jumping for him, you know, staying up there in the air. Uh, but, yeah. but, um, but I think a lot of it has to do with the training, definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just how, you know. Well, it's incredible. All of you guys coming out of the school, you know, you, you guys are <laughs> yeah. like, Wonderful. But like you said, you know, the Aris, you know, it's, it's really important, like, to our students or to any student watching this, you know, you need to be having discipline for mm -hmm. what you're doing. So you need to be so dedicated in and focus and, and repeating every, every combination over and over, or even like you said, position, just staying in a position. Right. Like when you start a combination, you have to be already in a position. You finish the combination, you have to be in a position at least for a few yeah. seconds. Exactly. In a position of balance, like you're gonna acquire yeah. balance. balance. First exactly. on flat, then on two legs, then on one. Yeah, I think you know, that's... Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is, this is incredible, yeah, because, I mean, you know, a lot of the time, you know, people want to go and move on faster forward. You know, you can do that. You can teach, but then your muscles are not going to adapt all these uh, things, you know, properly. It's going to just go over and over, but you're not yes. going to uh, establish the uh, foundation of that. Exactly, strength. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Once yeah. you create a bad habit, yeah. it's, it's very hard to change it. That's right. why I say sometimes to the kids, you know, don't rush into it. Like, yeah. you don't want to go, go do things too soon if your body's not ready for it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, yeah. with us, yes, it's very slow in the beginning. But by the time you start doing things, you know, mm -hmm. your muscles are strong. You know, everything, the foundation is there. And then you can fast. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's what Tara said. Once you, if you, your muscles aren't ready and you don't have the foundation, and then you start rushing into doing things. And, like, you know, I, we have... Kids sometimes we work on. Oh, I, I just want to do like I don't know. I want to do fuetes, but they don't know how to do a pirouette. You know, for example, <laughs> or even if I say balance in relevé. Yeah. So you know, that's why I say just worry about one thing at a time. You know, you yeah. get it better, and then. And you, by the way, just the, like I wanted to say that your fuetes are just out of this world. You could do like hundreds of fuetes and never get tired. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Speaking of fuetes, Adiaris. Talk to us a little bit of like your thought process. Once you go on stage, you're on, a st on stage and you, you're about to do four tests. Like, what is it that you think you need to do to get that incredible turn? Or maybe you don't think because it's in your muscle memory. And it's already. on one leg, 32 times. And I'm... she's doing like five pirouettes. I have to be honest, you know, I, some people go on stage and they don't practice. When, when the performance comes, they don't practice much. They say, you know, the work is done. I'm just going to go have fun. I'm one of those that practice over and over and over <laughs> right before a performance. Well, so, I don't know. I think it's because I, I just grow up that way and I'm just used to like feel my body and create that sensation right before I go on. I know if I'm on my leg or not that day. So I know, mm -hmm. you know, how far I can go. Like if I can push to do something that I want or not, you know, like mm -hmm. if I don't feel well when I'm practicing, I just won't. But then once I go on stage, I really just don't think about it. I just try to enjoy and just like, just, but one of the things too, I think is like with the years and like, you have to also lose the fear because if you have fear for a step, especially for pirouettes, which I think a lot of people do, 
it's very difficult when you go on stage. You mm -hmm. have to just lose that fear and you have to just try in the studio, even if you fall down, try mm -hmm. over and over and over and over and just get advice. over that fear. Mm -hmm. When you get over that, it's, mm -hmm. it's all good. Yes. I don't think about it anymore, but you know, again, it's many years of, you know, of uh, I did before. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did before a lot, but um, that fight pays off everything on stage. Yeah. You go on, you know, you, because we can see it. It's, you it's overcome just... that fear already, and that's it. You know, like a lot of people are on, over, you know, in the studios, they just go like, Oh my god, I'm gonna go down, but it's okay. You need to understand. I was like, You know, once you go down, next time you're not gonna do the same thing to go down, yeah. so you know, it's exactly a fight and the yeah. moment you trust your technique and everything you've worked on you exactly know? you have to trust yourself and you yes. know what you say everything you work out for every day mm -hmm. and you know our teachers also they push us hard i yeah. remember in school my teacher would just come before the show and be like i want 32 double for this today and i would be like what uh -huh. like but, but like, how i'm gonna do that and she said and i don't care it out. i don't you? care just do it and I would go for it. I would happen all over the place, but I would just go for it. <laughs> so that was something incredible too, you know. That... They, they would push us, yeah, to do five and six pirouettes in rehearsals and everything. As the artist, how old were you when you first did that? Like your double fuete, do you remember? Well, the first time I did Padre Day, mm -hmm. I was 12. I was in the <laughs> elementary ballet school. I was in level four. And... <laughs> I only have done just like class and uh, one competition, I think by that time only with variations. Uh, and mm -hmm. one of the guys that was at the national, that was a previous student of our, my school, he came and he said, one day before the festival in, in my school, you know, let's just do Padre Day. And my teacher went for it and let, she made us do Corsair. We learned it the day before and I went on stage yeah. and I did 32 for the singles, no doubts. <laughs> Um, but still, yeah, that's that's very cool. bad, but I finished them <laughs> somehow. <laughs> and that was the first time I did them on the, on stage. Um, I was twelve, and yeah, this yeah. Is scary, <laughs> scary. <laughs> that's wonderful. How about we um, you know, ask Taras a little yes. bit of questions? So talk, she... talk about you, Taras. What? Uh, <laughs> how everything became and how you became such an incredible dancer. Not only well, dancer, he's well, in jump. Let's start with the... the See ya. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it was the, the same. I started in the same school than Adi for eight years, but, you know, before that, before I joined the school, because they have an age limit. You start at nine years old, sometimes mm -hmm. at eight, ten. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't start before. And since I was, I don't know, four or five, I was dancing already around my house. Is, is that thing they posted ballet on TV on a pretty much on a daily basis, weekly basis, and it was it was very big. It was something it's huge. the school has thousands of students, and plus my mother was a teacher. Mm -hmm. you know, I grew up watching her what? teach and, and, and seeing Carlos and Carreño and all of those when they were students. I remember them, Boada especially. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yes. And nothing, I did the, the school like everybody else, then joined the, the company in Cuba, Alicia Alonso, Ballet Nacional de Cuba. And then I, I landed in San Francisco, one year right after you, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. remember that, well, that day, actually, I remember very well. I, we were up, I, I think we were on, on stage, it was, uh, you guys came. And, uh, yes, we do, we do class on stage, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. It wasn't December, it was during the year not I was turning, I was like, oh my god, here we go, another Cuban, and he's just like non-stop turning. And then I was like, I wonder if he has jumps. And then, you know, because I could do some double tours, and then he starts flying like... <laughs> and I was like, okay. I, I remember those days, I was so young, and I just wanted, you know, to show off. I was first, I audition, really first audition ever. Ever. <laughs> and nothing. I That's got hired different. and I spent nine years with you guys. I did Vanessa, I don't know. We did everything together. We did all the full length ballet. You were such a beautiful stage couple, oh my God. We, we did so much together. I know. Very great memories. We did Giselle, Swan Lake. Um, <laughs> Swan Lake, Giselle. Copelia, remember? Copelia, I love Copelia. Team and Variations. Team, oh. Ruiz, I don't Diana. know. Diana. Diana. Flames. Oh, yeah, Diana. Oh, Corsair. Sure. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so, so you guys many. danced a lot together. Great partnership. It was yes. so great. It was so I great. know, it was great. It was great. 
Yeah. When is the comeback? When is the comeback? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing. And then, well, as you know, I, I I asked the director to release me on my contract, and I started freelancing with Ali. Uh -huh. And it's been what three, three years, years now? A little bit more, no? Until Corona, <laughs> and <laughs> and at the same time I started teaching. I started getting involved in, into teaching a lot, mm -hmm. uh, learning from my mother mostly. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, by, 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 whoever, Mamicha too. As you know, uh, Mamicha, we know her very well. Tarsis' <laughs> mother, you know, uh, Magali, Suarez. Magali Suarez. She's an incredible teacher. We work incredible. with her, and she's an incredible human being. So we first met her. She actually. is in Miami. In Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when we met too. Oh, yes. yes. It was amazing. I remember. Sorry to interrupt. I remember Magali was like, "That tutu you have is so ugly for corsair. It looks like a cake." Vanessa, come here. Can you let her use your tutu? For... <laughs> they were so sweet. She gave me her tutu for the guy. Amazing. <laughs> She's like, take that off. It's like, it looks like a cake. <laughs> it was so sweet, so sweet. Amazing. Taras, Taras did you always have a big jump from, from young age? Mm, I, no, I was m more of a turner than a jumper. It's something mm -hmm. that developed. Later on, when I started watching videos of, of Carlos, when he left Cuba, later those Don Q's, and he was jumping like crazy, Kumagawa was a big, big inspiration for me when it comes to that. Barishnikov. But no, that's something that developed a little later on. No, not at the very beginning. Yeah. Probably when but my I mean, muscles were more ready to jump, I guess. I'm sure later, you had that. Later into my teens. Work hmm? work. Sorry? I said you had that in you already, the jump, but you needed to work and understand how to keep yourself up in the air, you know. And, and yes, it, it, because it was, it was parts, about creating. It was like, about creating sensation, mostly, yeah. and mostly for me on the split jumps. You know, the flexibility gave me to me, so I tried to exploit that, mm -hmm. and I did it, and I redid it, and I overdid it <laughs> until I built a sensation that it, it became easy to me. Like double tours for you, David. I don't remember I seeing a better double tour. For example, Amazing. <laughs> you know, you build you build a sensation, and yes, it was yes. just up, spot, spot, and down. The yeah. same. It's yeah. it's hard to explain. I don't. You always talk about practice about the takeoff. Practice, yes. Yeah. In Cuba, especially, my mother insists a lot, a lot, about mm -hmm. using the toast from the beginning, uh, from the tondus, gentes. Yeah. All of that, and you apply that on the jumps, and it's insane how the toes would push you up. Yeah, that's something I try to do, especially from jumps coming from two legs. Did you get up there sooner? So push you... off my toes, like I always <laughs> tell our students, you know, you need to have the articulation of going from your toes, yes, toes and make sure their heels go yeah. down to push it up, exactly, and then you push the toes up, yes. both up and down. That's for that's, that's, that's yeah. just technique. It's Good just... point. We see that a lot when we teach it now. Like people don't put the heels down, even yeah. on the knee place. Yeah. It's so yeah. dangerous. Yeah. yeah, very dangerous. Yeah. A lot of Achilles tendonitis or you know plantar fasciitis, you know all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. ripping or plié, yeah. plié, plié. <laughs> How many times you hear that in a class? Plié. <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> so tell us, Taras, what is it that once you go on stand for your double tour, what is the first thing coming in your head? What do you have to do to nail that double tour? Well, first of all, I try, first I try to think elevation. Elevation. Mm -hmm. Elevation, then the spot. The spot, is, I think, is what really makes you turn, you know, depending yeah. on, of your rhythm and the speed you want to give it. But elevation and spot. Then I try to think of the fifth position. It almost never works when I take off. I try to nail it when I land. <laughs> uh, but that's it. It, it's, for any for any jump, I really think elevation. Yeah. Any turning jump, elevation and spotting. Yeah, it's a good point. Elevating, elevating my hips, my popo. Uh, that's what I try to to elevate. And no when, more feet or, when, hmm? when you land and add the arms, you guys are like cats. You're like so soft. It's because sometimes the students don't understand that you can't. It's not a crash landing. It's not hard. It's like soft. Well, it, it's that articulation of the toes yeah. and plie, plie, plie. You yeah. Know? And, yeah, and also I think it has to do a lot with like working in your balance too. Mm -hmm. You know that your balance is always right on top of the standing leg and never on the heel. Yes. So you create that from the bar. Landing in yes. Yes. And, yeah. 
transition. And then it becomes easier. Yep, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then again, the class will prepare you for all that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, the bar, then the center. And then when the jumps comes, you're supposed to be ready to do all that. It takes time. It takes yeah. time. Especially bar, that foundation that everybody wants to rush, nobody wants to do, and I know it's hard, and it's like Long boring, and... but if you really focus, and it's so good. It's, it's the base it's the, you know, it's of good. everything. You're going it, to do later. It gives you stamina, it gives you flexibility, and yeah. the aura. Yes. I the love long bar. Now I do. <laughs> It's the breakfast, the most important meal. The bar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's right. You need to, you find everything. You find your balance. You find your plies. You find your posture. You find every single little detail you find. And then you need to bring that to the center without having that bar to help you. You know, and mm -hmm. those are really important things. And then you start going into the turns, into the jumps. And exactly. so that you're placed very well. And you, then you put the dancing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, you know, I was, since you were talking about the jumps, you know, because I, I grew up in a, a dancer's family and my father, you know, when I was learning how to do double tours, my father used to say to me, he said, if you want to do a good double tour, you need to jump first, turn, and then land. Yes. Come on, that's impossible. That's impossible. You know, like, but you know, it's, it, he had a point, you know, you need to have that ballon, mm -hmm. have to turn up in the air and then land it, you know. Exactly. Absolutely. No, that's what they taught us, exactly. Yeah. So, Adyars, um, did you, is your mother and father, were they dancers? Were they? No, mm -hmm. I'm the first one in the family. And then after me, I have two more cousins that do ballet. Ah, okay. <laughs> and my little niece now, she wants to dance too, crazy. But yeah, I'm the first one, no, no dancers family. Yeah, yeah me too. For me, you also, right? Yeah, me too. Yeah. No. Nothing but David has a very and Taras was your father? Uh, no, no, musician, Mamicha. Oh, musician. Oh, well, there you go. And well, you have another passion actually playing guitars, correct? Yeah. You oh. still playing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. Well, like, actually, by the way, uh, happy belated. You had a birthday, no? Yeah, thank you, man. 34, 34. <laughs> I just turned. All the best. And by the way, we have a few minutes before we. Wrap it up, guys. I want to just to tell you congratulations Yay! again because you Yay! Know, you don't want to come. Thank you. Okay, I will. Show us, show us, show us. Show us. Are they already show us? That's what okay. I'm oh. <laughs> Wait. Little baby. It's, uh, oh, guys. There's going to be a big boy. I don't know. Oh, oh yes, yes. Huge. Excellent. So cute. I still have some time to go, but. Adorable. Let me tell you, I can't, I can't wait to see that little baby start dancing. And turning <laughs> and jumping. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. It seems like he's already dancing in there, man. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm Classical sure. music. And he goes crazy. Yeah, I'm oh, sure. Seriously. Guys, keep playing the music because uh, Isabella as well, when I was pregnant with, with my daughter, she was just like music, listening. Yes. And now she she says, Mama, I'm, I'm tired after a long day. And she says, Mama, get up. Let's dance. Oh, Mama, my let's God. Dance. So she's going to, <laughs> huh? What, 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 do, what do you expect? <laughs> it's so cute. We're expecting the same. Yeah. We always say, no dancer, no dancer. But yeah. I know. Grandma, if they're going to, <laughs> then if they love it, then we yeah. won't force. Exactly. You know? That's rule number one. Exactly. Make them love for it. What can you do? <laughs> but maybe they'll dance together. Could you imagine? Yeah. Isabella and baby. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Do you guys that already have amazing. a name? Hey, it's in 15 years, Jackson. We'll see you in Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh my God. Can you imagine? God knows what the future. Do you think of a name? Huh? Yeah, they have a name for the baby. Oh, Tara Elias. Ah, I love it. Nice. I love it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Say the whole thing because it was really long. It's Taras. Taras is the first name. Mm -hmm. Elias. And then, didn't you say Domitro and... Uh, oh, oh Taras Elias Domitro. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I love it. Ah. It's a like family name, so... Yeah. Taras is like the fourth, I think. So it's like a family name and yeah. it's, a, it's very unique, you know. That's really nice. I love it. Congratulations, guys. We wish you guys Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you so much. We love, love you, you very much. We miss you. And, um, love, love you guys. guys. Thank you so much. Take Please care. say hi to Mamicha, okay? Yes. We will. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for joining us and talking yes. to us. And to Good our luck audience. with yeah. everything, okay, guys? Keep us yes. posted.
All we'll right. do. Yeah, we absolutely. Will. Take care. We stay, stay in touch. Yes. Be Love safe. You. Yes. Thank you Bye. for all Thank your great you. advice. That was great. Yeah, absolutely. Next and year. thank you everybody who joined us today. I see so many family and I they're know. all saying hi. Faces popping up there. <laughs> Guys, if you have any comments or any questions, please write it down and then we'll ask them separately and then we'll... Absolutely. We'll... <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. Love you. you have a nice day, okay? Bye. Yes, thank you. Take Bye. Care. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Oh, that was perfect. All right. That was so incredible, sweet. guys. Thank you all very much for joining us. Now we're going to try to find... Yuriko. Yuriko. We're so excited to have Yuriko Kajia joining Yuriko? us as well today. She's going to be uh, talking a little bit about, you know, her background. And then also we're very interested in um, discussing with her about her amazing balances. Yes. We can't wait to talk to her. As well. She's a very uh, well-rounded, uh, beautiful. There she is. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Yurika John. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Good, good to see you. You look good lovely. Good to see you. Too. Yes, thanks for uh, joining us today. No, thank for... you for having me. Yeah. yeah, of course, this is incredible. And uh, by the way, um, actually, we'll give you maybe just to talk about your background and how you started and all that. And then I'll, I'll say the rest mm -hmm. coming in because so much to talk about. Yeah, maybe you can just about. start yeah. talking a little bit about your background in ballet and where okay. you started, where you were born and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Hi everyone, I'm Yuriko Kachia. I'm from Japan, but I actually, all my body training was done in China. So when I was age 10, I moved to Shanghai Ballet School, where YY is from, from San Francisco. Yes, <laughs> we had the same teacher for a little bit. So I was there for six years. <laughs> so that's where I had my main training and I did um, Pridozan competition, which mm -hmm. I met David uh, at the Pridozan two years ago, being a jury member together. But I competed the competition in 2000, and then that led me to National Ballet School in Canada. Oh. And, and then I joined American Ballet Theater Studio Company, and then to the main company, and now in Houston Ballet. <laughs> yes. Great. Beautiful. Incredible. Yeah. So yes, you saw Yuriko. We saw. We saw. We met uh, uh, first time. Well, actually, I I I'm sure I saw you because I I went to Pridlozan 1999, and after that competition, you know, I was there every year watching the finals. Oh. Yes. Every year, about six years in a row, I went there to watch the final so I'm sure I saw you <laughs> because great... it's close to where yeah I was... so I used to be in Zurich with Zurich Ballet after after I, I worked there for six years in the company so it was you know three hours of uh, train ride so it was great to oh, go so to lucky. see the, the dancers <laughs> and friends and all that so it was incredible and then the great thing was two years ago we both were as you remember at the Pridl which was incredible mm -hmm. and just I think it was just talk about your, you know, perspective of that, you know, being in that competition and then being a jury member. What was that oh, like? It was so surreal to be behind the table, no? It was, I have to say, judging the competition, because it's a little different than any other competition. You have to judge the students from day one from doing class, and then you watch them do class almost every day. and Stressful a little bit. So stressful. I can't, I mean, yes, we were both in that shoot. They, we, we were one of the computer, but mm -hmm. I guess you're fearless when you're a student. You just do about <laughs> anything. Yeah. But when you're watching, I, I was, as I was judging, I'm thinking, oh, goodness, these students must be so nervous because mm -hmm. <laughs> I would have been. <laughs> the thing is, they were so young, too. You know, the talent gets so, so much younger now. It's, and incredible and of course we all wanted to do the best you know because we want to do our best you know because the, their career is just starting and you know we want but to you're judge thinking them. that you're also that you're 
their career is in your hands yes, like yes, if yes. you like them or your opinion really matters yeah. so mm -hmm. it's a lot of pressure you yeah. know but i think For you sure. know all of them were incredible it's just a matter of little things here and there that you know they they get into the finals and stuff but they were all incredible and i'm sure all of them are going to have a yeah. bright future yuriko was that your first uh competition to judge to judge yes yes it was your first uh-huh mm -hmm. amazing not only that um so David was raving about how such such a sweetheart you were and talking to me on the phone because I had just had um, Isabella, our daughter. Yes. <laughs> and then he went two weeks after. To yeah, he, told, yeah. he didn't tell us. He didn't tell yeah. us right away, so but when we found out, we were like, oh my God, you just had a baby. <laughs> but it was amazing then he just wouldn't stop raving about uh, how you were such a sweetheart and you know, such a, a kind person and great. And, you know, we were fortunate to have you teach with our students. Yes. Oh, no. Arie, we yeah. thought it would be great to pass on your wonderful, <laughs> um, you know, training and talent. And, but yeah, thank you so much for that. Yeah, they, the kids mm -hmm. had blast having your class. And they were already, when I told them, you know, uh, about you that you're going to be teaching, and the first they were like, oh, you know, you're like, was she in ABT? I was like, <laughs> oh my God, great. Yeah. And, so she, and you are known right now on like uh, social media for your music box turning, balancing, yes. <laughs> and turning while you're balancing. It's right incredible. Yes. After, after seeing that video and then I see so many ballerinas trying that. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, that's one of your, you know, specialties. You're overall, you know, beautiful dancer, beautiful mm -hmm. artist and stuff. But let's talk about about your balancing, balancing and what <laughs> was how it started how you became such an incredible balancer were you always naturally do you have to think about because you, if you guys think about who doesn't know ballet you know i mean the, the, the shoe is just you know Tiny. an inch all around so you need to all balance on that and it's, yeah. it's incredible which your whole body can Balance for it. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's very tiny and light but there must be something that you think about um, I have to say, um, I, I mean, I can still balance, but I'm not very good at balancing at demi point. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm better balancing on point. One of one of the things because the shape of my feet, I my demi point doesn't um, come easily for me, so on point is much easier. Mm -hmm. But. No, um, yes, now people, a lot of people think that, oh, this must be like walking in the park for you. you always balancing. But no, it did. <laughs> I did have to put a lot of work to it of to course. get to you mm -hmm. where I am now as far as um, balancing also. Mm -hmm. And um, I think all the ba balancing practice definitely started when I was a student. Like the Piddles on, the first thing you do in Giselle variation is pique arabesque. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So mm -hmm. I did that PK best who knows how many times. Yeah, so times. So so that that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one of so, those. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that definitely started my balance. No, I mean, that's not so much of a balance. You have to go on point and stay. But the next thing that's most important for that Zizel version is roll through. Mm -hmm. But definitely getting on your leg as far as that is, that's my start of my balancing practice started from that Giselle variation with the pre mm -hmm. and recently right before this um this corona pandemic started uh, Houston Bay was performing Sleepy Beauty which has the Rosa Dodge yes. Dodge balance so I was definitely <laughs> prepping for that for a long time mm -hmm. so it was somewhat already in my body for sure because Sweeping Beauty performance was a week before this stay home order in Houston. So I was practicing a lot for the balance right before it. So it was you guys... my body. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Well, it's amazing. I mean, what, what uh, we see all over social media, you know, well, you're balancing and what a um, phenomenon you are, like a legend in your own sense. I mean, you're such a beautiful answer and people it's just amazing <laughs> yes yes if you haven't seen that balance i would encourage everybody to go to watch and in, in her in, 
I mean, on her Instagram, yes. you know, and not just you're balancing and just, uh, you know, having a sip of coffee, but you're doing this arm and you're promenading on that. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's Lovely. what's incredible. Yes. You're not just standing in one place. You're going a full promenade with swan leg arms. And I thought first time I was like, when I saw, I was like, Vanessa, watch this. <laughs> I, what yes. is this? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's incredible, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I'm sure, you know, everybody is just, you know, looking up to you and saying, you know, what are we going to do and how are we going to, to be mm -hmm. in that place eventually, you know, in one day in their life, in their career. Um, so what is it, what is it also that you, you know, um, th practice, like what is the, the special practicing or starting warming up or what is, what is it that you start with your day for your classes or, um, performances and what, you, what are your thought process going through that? Any special routine you have or? Um, stretches, it can be stretching or it can be just a doing a bar, but you have a specific bar that you do before performances. And... Uh, not so much, but as far as balancing goes, I don't, I'm, if you've watched me doing bar, I'm not balancing all the time, no. Um, but what I do do is if someone is, let's say the teacher was actually given a combination to do a balance on passe or I teach you balance, I'm usually actually often on my fifth position trying to find my center on fifth. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. And closing my eyes. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, I mean, I cannot close my eyes and stay for more than probably three seconds. <laughs> this just once close your eyes, you just start to fall apart. It's hard to be very still, you know, mm -hmm. and finding that internal, then you can emote and... Yes, so definitely I find myself doing bar many times that I close my eyes on fifth position or even on flat just to find my inner center and find myself, and that definitely leads me into when I have to balance on single leg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice, that's great. Is there like a, a, a conditioning, strengthening routines that you do before class or after class for, you know, um, certain muscles to, you know, for a posture can be, or whatever it is that you need to be strengthened and to help your dancing in general, or, or it could be the balancing, I don't know. Um, actually, right now, now that we are all at home dancing, now that I really enjoy myself doing a small yoga, mm -hmm. not a full whole thing, but I do half a yoga exercise. It's, mm -hmm. I should say yoga and Pilates all mixed together, make sure what I put it together, mm -hmm. and some um, strengthening of abs and uh, back, back muscles. So I do that for about an hour before I start bar right now, and I definitely feel myself centered so much better than just mm -hmm. to stretch before I do class. So what specifically muscles do you feel when you're balancing or you have to think about to hold you? I mean, obviously your back when you're balancing on the one leg, mm -hmm. uh, but you think about your core, you think about your shoulder blades and, and arms and turnout, maybe hamstrings could be a, a big factor, I think, is for a turnout. Or the right? arms pushing down yeah. or something. Well, as you know, like you have to think about so many different things when you're doing a balance. And but the one thing I do really focus on is the supporting hip. Okay. I have to, I find everyone has different shape of legs and different type of shoes or your condition. So everyone's different. But for me personally, I, I find my balance through my supporting hip. Mm -hmm. So if, I push myself down with my leg and I use my hip to pull myself up. Mm -hmm. And I engage my back in certain ways that I don't have, I don't move around. So I lock my back and mm -hmm. engage my um, back with my arms up. So mm -hmm. that definitely, that finds my balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because my hip is pulled up and I'm pushing my leg down, even when my foot wobbles, I'm still able to pull it back to where I need for centered. 
-hmm. That's incredible. It is. Yeah, because a lot of, you know, you see a lot of balancers and their, their hips move, but like you're explaining, you know, that your hips doesn't move at all. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, you know, I find, you know, it's the, one of the heaviest parts in our body that, and, and it's right in the middle of our body that needs to be very stable. And for certain things, you know, it can be turned on the one leg or balancing, you know. And, and it's finding that weight shift. It's so hard for students right now to find their supporting leg. They, mm -hmm. They're in the middle, you know, it's, it's sure. the, having your body, your hips over on top of your toes, not on the heel. Yeah. And that's so important to find that and then you can experiment once you, yeah. Yes, for sure. But, because when I do the rosatage with the four suitors, the four company, company uh, male dancers, mm -hmm. every ballerina needs different things for the promenade and they all ask for different things, but they all tell me that I usually tend to want, don't want any pressure on the arms. I'm very light mm -hmm. because when I get on, I'm already trying to find where my hip balance is. So when I, as I do in the promenade, I'm already on my leg, so I don't have to shift around. Mm -hmm. So definitely having that engagement on my hip is very important for me. Mm -hmm. But as far as literally balancing on stage, I have to get my mind off completely. If I'm, um, it's almost like when I'm balancing, it's a bit of a zen moment. If I think too much, I start to wobble. So I just have to go like, peace. <laughs> And that's the yoga, right? You're just yes. Yeah, yeah. Yoga. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I have this question. I think I, I know the answer, but I want you to. Um, I, I might be wrong. Who knows? Uh, what is your favorite ballet? And and if it's if it's an abstract or it's a story ballet, lyrical. Um, I think it's really lyrical, but you go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I definitely have. Two, two, I mean, there's so many ballets that I love, but if I have to pick two, like, I don't know if I can pick one, <laughs> two top ballets, it would be Giselle and Madame Butterfly by Stanton Welch. Oh, oh okay. nice, yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw a, a, a clip of the, the Madame Butterfly. Uh, I never seen the, the full ballet, but I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's, it's incredible, wonderful. yes. Yes. He's a great choreographer. Yes, we work yes, with we work with him, mm -hmm. so it's yes. great. And the music is wonderful. Yeah. And we just pouring your heart into a role is something mm -hmm. I definitely enjoy. Just become someone else on stage completely and live someone's life on stage. It's, yeah, it's so great. Tell so a story. Basically, it's lyrical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Telling stories this this is another mind. Giselle, yes, yes. I mean, it's... it's it's important, you know, to have that uh, artistry that you have, you know, and it, it takes a lot of people, you know, they, they concentrate on the technique a lot, and which is important. Mm -hmm. you know your technique from young age, then you kind of let that go and take over the artistry because this art form, you know, generally it's about how you bring your heart to the stage and how to uh, put you yourself and put yourself out there and, and, and say or you know, because we, we don't speak. We have to explain everything with our gestures, with our movements, with our facial expressions, and into, into telling a story uh, without just speaking. And it's, I think it's incredibly hard and it's, it's difficult to do that. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's, it's lovely to see such an artist, you know, mm -hmm. such as you and so many of them, you know, just to tell that story with their facial and expressions. And the feeling that you get with the audience, you know, that you actually told the story they get it and they applaud you at the right, end right. it's such a nice feeling yeah. so we'll, we'll get that back <laughs> yeah. yeah well bravo to you yes it is a, it, it is our to mm -hmm. speak with the audience and like like when we were doing um the peter Zan competition um, um all of the jury members um we all talk after mm -hmm. every class or every variations and you know, as David know, that we all agree that yes, we all talk about this so and so, this num this number I don't know, one fifteen had this amazing leg or this number ten had a beautiful pirouette. But in the end what we were all looking at, what we all look for is the history. The performing quality and the special 
quality that the students have, even just standing there doing bar, just our eyes will just go to certain students because they just radiate of this um, aura mm -hmm. of the um, magic that they can yeah. create, not just because of the beautiful technique that they do. And mm -hmm. I was fortunate to be, be one of the jury member for um, Beijing competition also last year, and they also had amazing um, jury members all from around the world. And it's the same thing across the board. They were all not impressed with just having the technique or how high the legs goes. They were all mm -hmm. looking at the same thing of who are the artists, not a technician. That's yeah. all it comes towards the end, you know, and whoever is watching, all the students, I, I would, you know, it's good, it's great that you're practicing for your technique and stuff. But towards the end, it comes into the artistry because we have to tell a story. We have to put mm -hmm. our soul and heart onto stage to make sure people understand what we want to say and how we want to present ourselves to the audience so mm -hmm. and you've done that beautifully uh, yuriko chan thank you so much for thank joining you for, us you're an incredible yeah, thank you for having for, me thank you for yes. giving your great advice to yes the this is really important yes. you know for the mm -hmm. students and uh, and we hope that uh, we'll see you soon maybe back in our studios someday yes. um, we yeah. wish you all the best for your career it's wonderful and we hope maybe we'll come see you live yes <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. No, thank you for having me. Yeah. Of course. You have a nice day. We'll talk soon. Yes, Bye. thank you. Bye. 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 Ciao, ciao. <laughs>